All right, uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Cool. All right, I'm going to apologize in advance for having too many slides and talking way too fast. It's a, it's a habit, but I'm going to try to get through as much as I can so there's plenty of time for questions for what you couldn't understand from my, my talking. So I'm going to be talking about inclusive pedestrian mapping, uh, op open sidewalks, access map, two different projects, as well as just accessibility in general and open street map. Uh, as Clifford introduced me, it was very nice. Um, I'm Nick Bolton. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Washington, uh, Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. I do a bunch of stuff involving OSM and coding and a bunch of different things. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what I'm going to talk about so it kind of makes sense. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about how pedestrians face an informational challenge. I'm going to talk about a case study using the Access Map project. I'm going to talk about why and how we should use OpenStreetMap for pedestrian accessibility information and what we're doing and where we want to go with open sidewalks. So first, I'm going to talk about the need for, for pedestrian information. Uh, so a common statistic that we cite is that 54.5 million people in the United States can be categorized as either using an assistive mobility device or otherwise having trouble walking a quarter mile. And this is a kind of a stereotypical response we get when we talk to a user uh, of Maps who has some kind of mobility requirement. They'll say, using a tool like directions on Google Maps doesn't really help me get around. Actually, sometimes it does more harm than good. You can be sent down streets that you can't cross or up inclines that are impossible to climb. It can be deeply frustrating. So uh, why do people encounter that? Well, one, we try to group everyone into, into categories for pedestrians, like wheelchair equals yes is supposed to account for every single wheelchair user. And in addition, if we just try to enumerate all the different groupings and try to treat that as data, there would be far too many. Because every single person is a pedestrian. Every single person has a different requirement or, or preference when it comes to mobility. And even if you were to group people into these categories, there's tons of variation within them. So we, we can't treat it like cars, where essentially every car has roughly the same access. Even among a manual wheelchair user, user group, not everybody actually has that big of a preference for, for curb ramps. In fact, we have a user who says, don't even tell me about curb ramps. All I care about is incline. And he gets very grumpy about it. Uh, and so when we, when we try to do this grouping, we, we notice a lot of times people want to mark their data as being wheelchair accessible or ADA compliant. And that is not a very good label because it does not account for this variation. What we really need is specific on the ground information that we can then interpret based on user preferences, based on a stereotyped user requirement. So as an example of the kind of information people need, and which is almost always missing from maps, including OpenStreetMap, you can't, ample, answer, you can't ask simple questions like, where are sidewalks or crosswalks or places that you could just use as footpaths? Uh, where are there barriers that I might encounter as I try to use this, this uh, infrastructure? Are there large raised curbs? Are there gaps in the infrastructure? And, and where are other types of barriers? Things like, like uh, restrictions on width, very, very narrow bridges, or surface types. Uh, gravel can pose a serious challenge to somebody using a wheelchair. So as an example um, of these pedestrian information needs going unmet, I'm going to pick on Google. Google is by far not, not, not the worst. They're average, if not better than average, when it comes to this kind of information. But they're kind of a stereotypical example. You still can't ask those questions. Where are sidewalks? Where is too steep? Will I run into obstructions? Are there stairs? On the right, I'm showing an example of a typical um, attempt to get a route on Google Maps. This is University of Washington campus trying to go from a light rail station to a building on campus. Every single route here would be impassable for kind of a stereotyped wheelchair user. The, the chosen path has a massive section of gravel that, that would not have enough traction for, for the average uh, wheelchair user. And the other two routes both include stairs. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about Access Map. The, this is a, a user-facing application, all open source, all open data. Everybody can download, run their own version if they'd like to. Um, and the, the purpose of, of Access Map is to say, what if we do have a little bit of this information? What can we do with it? How can we supply something that is useful for people? So it's based on um, municipal data that we laboriously interpret into a pedestrian network. We try to emphasize that pedestrian network and show the information to the user. You can see in bright colors, we're seeing where the sidewalks are. They're color coded by how steep it is. Red is very steep, green is not very steep, and hatched means it's totally impossible for this user preference. Uh, we're also showing more information that I'll kind of skip over for now, but there's, there's more info in there. And using Access Map, you can treat it just like you use any mapping application for, for getting trips. You can say, I'm here, I want to go there. You can search for addresses. And what you get back is a route tailored to your needs. And you can see this route here near the bottom is not the shortest path. It's not going straight from point A to point B, as you would normally find. It's actually avoiding steep areas and providing a route that this user could actually theoretically do. 
In addition, this is tailored to user needs. So it's not that there is a wheelchair profile that's pre-calculated. We can change those preferences and say, you know, actually, I can't do things that are quite as steep as that default preference. I need to dial it back a little bit. And they'll get a different route that actually works for them. Uh, in addition, we try to reflect what people actually do on the ground. So in the city of Seattle, there's very, very steep areas downtown. So there's kind of a lore that people spread around saying, here's where public buildings are that have elevators. So we add elevators to the map and say, here's where you can do a little shortcut depending on what time of day it is. We can also flip this pedestrian network that we use to create these routes, turn it around, and try to use it for analytics, try to understand our spaces. You can't, answer, you can't ask very, very simple questions of our pedestrian network that you'd expect to be able to. When people create, for example, analyses of how well public transit is serving individuals, they, they treat people either as like a bird that can fly anywhere as the crow flies. They treat people as slow cars that can go on any single road very slowly and sometimes kind of you know, jump onto a different path. But they never get treated as people who have very specific requirements and aren't going to be willing to walk in the middle of a highway, for example. So we can flip that around once we have just this minimal amount of information, sidewalks, crosswalks, curb ramps, and start to kind of analyze things. So here, here we can see all these color sections are little islands where a typical wheelchair user would not be able to, to access if they were, were in Seattle. So we can just ask that question en masse and really try to understand the city and our environment. And we can take it a step further and we can look at, you know, if I start here, where can I get roughly in a 400 meter walk shed? This is a question you can't really answer specifically without this information. But once we have it, we can make scores and say, here's, here's the real walk score for this area. We can compare it to attempts at a walk score and see that they don't match. But they do match what we would expect from a typical uh, pedestrian. Uh, and finally, Access Map is a lot of work. Not patting myself on the back, I'm just saying it takes a lot of work to get this going. And the reason for that is that the data, besides being missing, even when it is available, is in completely random standards uh, of quality as well as just the, the schema that people decided to use to collect this information. So we have to spend a ton of time writing custom, custom algorithms that will clean this data for hundreds of thousands of sidewalks and put it all together. And we, we don't want to have to do that for every single city, and we don't want that to be the requirement for anybody to have pedestrian information. So a common question we do get is that question. I want a pedestrian network for my city. How do I do it? Well, we're immediately faced with a bunch of difficult questions. Where can we get the data? Is, is the data available? How can we use it? What's the, what's the schema? If there's no good data, will anybody collect it? If we do decide to collect the data and we're going to have resources for that, what format should it be in? If we do get the data, how will it be kept up to date? And usually we can't answer these questions directly. It takes quite a bit of back and forth. Uh, and this is the motivation for the Open Sidewalks project and discussions regarding OpenStreetMap. So the first thing I want to convince you is that OpenStreetMap is a good platform for this, for this work. You're all already pretty interested in OpenStreetMap, so I don't have to sell you on that. But I can point out that OSM has been very good at addressing underserved needs. There is worldwide coverage, of course, which decreases the barrier of entry to adding information. You can add information anywhere in the world as, as a user and take control of your local space. Uh, the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap project runs tons of mapathons, uh, gathering like, good data for humanitarian, some humanitarian purposes with relatively low infrastructure. And WheelMap is a project very focused on getting accessibility information for points of interest. So you can know if a restaurant, for example, will have a wheelchair ramp. Uh, in addition, this is a very crowdsourceable problem. Every single person is aware of their local pedestrian space and can tell you what's wrong with it or what, what is available. What they need is some way to communicate that effectively as information that can be used by others. The next question that immediately arises is, how should we map pedestrian spaces? And here's where we start to get slightly contentious. But I think we can mostly agree that we should maximize and minimi minimize these different uh, uh, sides of looking at, at our data. We want to have standards so we can communicate what we're talking about. We want to have neutral on the ground descriptions. This is like an OSM standard. We want this data to be networky, and that's probably the, the biggest issue. We want to know if you're going to encounter something as you travel around in the pedestrian network. We want mapping solutions to be incremental, so you don't have to add 20 different tags all at once for it to be useful. You want to be able to add little bits at a time. And we want it to be maintainable and introspectable so we can know when data is missing. Uh, finally, we want it to be quick to map. We don't want it to be super ambiguous because that limits usefulness. And we want to avoid changing as like the entirety of OSM in order to accomplish this. So what is Open Sidewalks in this context? We're a, a project, like an overarching project, that tries to organize different efforts. One of the efforts we try to organize is data standards. Uh, we didn't come up with the tags that we're going to talk about. We do try to develop some tags, but for the most part, they exist. But when someone asks us, hey, how am I going to map this sidewalk area, there's basically very little resources available for someone to know for sure how they should go into OSM and start adding pedestrian information. So we help with that. We work with local OSM groups. Um, 
and we, we try to get these groups of like agencies and different nonprofits that want to map this information and try to get them involved with OSM so that that data is public. Uh, we also host our own mapathons and run a class where we develop tooling for this, pro this project. And we have created our own tools on the side for doing streamlined editing and tasking and import stuff and all kinds of ways to get more data. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about data standards uh, with a subtitle, Do We Have to Fight? I say we don't have to fight, but just a little reference to how contentious it can be sometimes on the mailing lists. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest two kind of a dichotomy here in how people try to approach sidewalks and pedestrian mapping in general in OpenStreetMap. Um, it's not a full dichotomy because you can actually map both of these ways. They're totally compatible. We don't have to fight over it totally. But I'm going to present them. So option one is that you annotate all pedestrian information regarding things like sidewalks on the street line. The other is that you draw your own separate sidewalks. Uh, and I'll skip over this real quick, what the tags are. And I'll suggest my opinion, which is that the one on the left is really good for answering the question, does this street have a sidewalk? Not as good for describing a pedestrian network that people can use. The one on the right is good for a pedestrian network. So I'm going to run you through really fast examples of a stereotyped area of University of Washington campus. I'm just going to draw where roughly a couple of street lines would be and how we would try to add sidewalks in both options. So first, I'm going to talk about the option that adds information to the street line itself. And I'm going to go very quickly. So I'm just going to go and say, here's how you'd add sidewalks. You'd put that information onto the actual street itself. Maybe you could highlight which side of the street now has sidewalks. We have now split several of these lines in different pieces. So we can say, sidewalk on the left, sidewalk on the right, sidewalk both, sidewalk no. Then we might want to add. Uh, stairs, for example, it's a little bit low contrast, but I've added a piece of stairs. It's not geospatially accurate, and that's because the streets are not geospatially accurate for the pedestrian ways either. It's a little bit of a cheat. In addition, we've added crossings. These are added as points along the way, roughly at the location of the actual crosswalk. We want to add more detailed information, such as how wide is the sidewalk, which can be very important basic information. We, we now need to use a slightly more complex scheme where we say sidewalk, colon, right, or left, and start adding that information. And at every point where this differs on either the left or right side of the street, we need to split the way of the street into get more pieces. Uh, then we might want to add information about curbs or curb ramps. This is information that would go on the crossing. We cannot specify that one side does have curb ramps and one does not, so it's not totally clear what the tags always mean. But if it says curb equals lowered, we assume that means it's probably a curb ramp. Uh, in addition, we want to add surface information. This is just the same type of deal as width. We're going to split the line wherever, wherever it changes. Uh, finally, if you want to add barriers, uh, I've added a little super bright green barrier here. That's because the sidewalk gets very, very narrow, and there's a gigantic tree there that totally prevents probably the vast majority of wheelchair access at this location, big uplift from the tree root. Uh, this gets added as well to the street line with a specifier saying which side of the street it's on. So if we, if we summarize, we started out with a street that had two ways, potentially, in order to describe some, some turn lanes. Now we have at least seven ways. And we've split up the, the street quite a lot. And we'd be doing this typically over and over and over again all over the entire city. And with the footways, all the information is embedded in the street. We have to be very careful when we edit. If you even reverse one segment of that street, your pedestrian network is now broken. Uh, now I'll give you the, the alternative, which I'm clearly biased towards, and describe what you do. So you would draw the sidewalks where they actually are. Spatially, you can see where they are. You can also geospatially just say accurately where they start and stop. We can then also add the steps, because I chose it to be way too low contrast. That's uh, up here in this area, drawn, drawing the stairs where they actually exist so you can see where they should be added. We can add the crossings. These are also ways, so you can see how you would cross the street at these locations. Uh, we've added width information. This is nicely encapsulated in the actual footway itself. Curbs can be added where they actually exist in space so that you can know if you were to travel and cross the street, you would encounter a curb of a certain situation. It would be raised, it would be lowered, it could be rolled. There's a whole, there's a whole schema for that. When we add surface information, it's the same deal. It's encapsulated in the footways. And we want to add the barrier. We add that to the actual sidewalk and don't clutter the street with that information. So as a summary, we haven't messed with the street at all, really. We've maybe added a couple of nodes to say where it intersects. Uh, and we have encapsulated all of our tags in the footways. There's a bunch of other issues I could go over, but again, I have way too many streets or way too many slides. Uh, but suffice it to say, my, the takeaway I would say is that interpreting that first option raises the barrier to entry for understanding the pedestrian ways. If you put all that information onto the street, it now means that the only the only people who can really understand that information are people who maintain routing engines. Um, and so I'd like it to be something that's a little bit easier to grasp and a little bit easier to use. Uh, and we also do actual results besides having opinions. So uh, for example, we helped uh, San Jose group with data standards as well as import tools. 
Um, credit would go to, to Vivek and Min. These are, are group people in the local uh, San Jose area working with Transit Authority or Mapbox who, who took their extra time to import the entirety of San Jose and adding according to the standard. And of course, we've mapped our local area, or large sections of it. Not all of it yet, because we're using it as a test bed for improving strategies. So as a wrap up, uh, I want you to hopefully be convinced that pedestrian network information is very important, albeit usually missing. We can do a lot with just a little bit of information. Access Map actually doesn't use that much information to get a lot done. We can do a lot more if we have it in the right format. And we should do this in OpenStreetMap. And as a final call to action, uh, I, think I would like to highlight the places where we really need help or other ways to come together. So one is we really need resources for how to map pedestrian spaces. Everybody is confused about how to do it. Nobody knows where to look to understand, hey, I want to map sidewalks. What do I do? Um, so documentation, writing, that would all be very, very useful. Uh, it would be great to work together on tools. We have a million tool ideas and things we're working on, but they would be better if we had more people using them or coding them. And organization is the most important. So I'd like to have everyone get together and have a place where we can talk about this information and get organized. Uh, so thank you. You can, you can find us at opensidewalks at gmail.com would be the best place. Or alternatively, to go to the, the OSMUS Slack. It has a sidewalks channel, which is great. And I'm also going to suggest a, a birds, uh, birds of a feather meeting for, for later on. Uh, thank you. Sure. I'm, not, I'm not sure if I, if I heard everything. I heard that you're a GIS developer with, with Seattle. Yeah. And then what, what was your question or comment? So you, I remember like, problems with like, the that you were using Oh, I may have misstated. I may have miscommunicated that a little bit. We're using s.data for access map. But we have to totally overhaul it and redraw everything from scratch because it's not stored in a, in a format that treats it as a network. All of the sidewalks are actually stored as metadata of the street and then incorrectly interpolated. Um, and then all the data that CL collects regarding sidewalks is keyed to that and is therefore spatially inaccurate. So there's a lot of issues with that that we have to work around. And, and the best solution for it would be to have like a public data exchange like OSM so we could kind of like suggest places where things are wrong or, or fix them. Yeah, that's, that's a super good point. So, so, so they're saying that it would be, be great if we could kind of like feed back and say, this resource says this information is here. We can suggest changes to this group, and that group can suggest them back. And I think that's the, the best relationship that we could possibly set up when it comes to pedestrian data is having stakeholders who both collect and use the information like that. Um, and yeah, we would, we would really like to work with the CS Seattle. We've tried, tried many times with, with limited success due to certain issues I should be diplomatic about. but. Um, that is, that is, I think, the ideal way to, to work forward. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the question is about whether we could put this kind of information about how to map onto the wiki and those kinds of resources. And I would say definitely, definitely yes, we should definitely do that. And one of the challenges is this chicken and egg thing with the data standards, because there are certain things that we want to strongly recommend, but also should probably be accepted by community standards as well. So there's kind of this thing where we kind of need to get together and push both at once to say, here's how we really want to map going forward, and also here's how you should map. Oh, so that's a good question. So, so he's asking about what do we do when there are driveways and you're mapping a sidewalk? They're going to they're gonna intersect. So what do you do at that point? Uh, and in our case, so far, it's been we've considered it sufficient for our purposes to just make them share a node and, and, and infer kind of what's happening at that point. If it, at a, uh, just a shared node could, for, for our purposes. But there, it could be that there is value in having a tag dedicated to saying, hey, you're going to go across a driveway here.
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's making a point about about safety. How uh, riding your bike on the sidewalk is fairly common and some and often even legal, but there's still a safety challenge when it comes to cars cars backing out. So having that at the minimum, we we, we try to recommend that if you draw a pedestrian path that that will overlap with some other path that's at the same level, that you make them share a node. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, that's one of those questions about barriers to entry, because someone doing a sophisticated check on intersections could say, yeah, this is a sidewalk and it intersects with a driveway, so we're going to add some information there to our map that says you're going to intersect this. Whereas someone who maybe isn't as familiar with making routing engines would prefer to have an actual tag there that says, hey, you're going to run into a driveway. No, I haven't, I haven't even written it up yet, but I'm going to go put it up right after this. So he's asking about birds of a feather. Correct. The, the current version of Access Map um, is extremely flexible in the kind of data it will accept. Right now, we have two deployments, one for both of them in Washington. But it's extremely flexible. So at, at the moment, the way that it works is you you have an entire dedicated set of tools that are all for that one city, and you can deploy it in your, in your area once you give it the piece of data. But we would strongly prefer to make it something that's based on OpenStreetMap so that if you want to have this kind of information synthesized or used useful for you in your local area, all you have to do is add that data to OpenStreetMap. Yeah, Clifford. Oh, yeah, so Clifford's asking about, about height information which is an interesting topic. So the way that we do height information is we get it from the USGS data set, the one, one third arc second or something that's really meant for geological purposes. But we, we do a lot of, we, we have tools that are built into the software packages that are open source that, that kind of try to infer the most accurate incline that you can get and then calculate uh, a conservative estimate of what the true incline is going over a given sidewalk area. Um, but that's an interesting topic because, in, and I was going to mention also that you said that you couldn't put incline information in OSM, but you actually can. There's an incline tag, but it is for it is for maximum incline, so it's slightly unclear what the meaning is just from the tag name. Yeah. Sure. That, that's a that's a super good nerdy question, which. I like because it's nerdy about data. Um, so the question is about pedestrian areas. So a lot of places are going to be a plaza where it doesn't make sense to draw a single line to represent the space. Instead, someone will draw a polygon and say, this is an area for pedestrians. Here's where you can go. And how does that work with routing? And the first point I would make is kind of like to step, take a step back and consider um, that one of the things that's unique about pedestrian information in OpenStreetMap or any map is that you're not as constrained as you are with, with traffic, where there's, there's no lanes. There's, it's not actually necessarily just a single line that you could travel down. Pedestrians could, could often, in theory, walk wherever the heck they want over a space. So there's this kind of compromise that we're doing by describing it as a line. And, and so when it comes to a pedestrian area, we've decided you know, the best compromise here is to draw, draw a polygon. And how would we route with that? The, the naive way that people do route with that is they treat it as a path, and you route around the edges. You're then kind of, you're not totally accurate, but things are at least connected in that way. The, the more appropriate way to handle that would be to have a consistent strategy for interpreting that information. And there's a bunch of wonky ways to do it. So it'd be great if it were a little bit easier to access for average people to try to figure out what the route would be, uh, even just synthesizing data off of it. But simple strategies are to get like a straight skeleton off of the polygon or to do a literally like a robotics strategy for scanning where you could, where you could move. So, so there are strategies for doing it, and we're implementing them. The, the problem with them is just that they're not as easy for, for any person who wants to build their own thing to use. That's all the questions. Uh, thank, thank you again for having me.